Welcome to an unexpected and unplanned fourth installment of our water cooling guide. So in this guide, we are going to be showing you guys a couple cool things. And one of them is how to upgrade your machine once you've water cooled it, because it's not that easy. It involves taking apart some water cooling, putting together some water cooling. We're going to be taking our Extreme Buyer's Guide system, which had the 990X Extreme Edition processor, water cooled RAM, dual GTX 590s, and we're going to be upgrading it to LGA 2011. So that means we're going to go from our Gigabyte G1 Assassin motherboard to an X79 UD7. We're also going to replace that 990X with the newer 3960X on LGA 2011. We're going to be changing over our water block because since we built this system, Swift Tech has actually upgraded their flagship water block to the Apogee XT, and we've actually got one of the limited edition gold-plated ones here, although uh, those are only going to be available for a little while. Finally, we're going to be adding, because the memory slots are separated on this motherboard, we're going to be adding another copperhead block for the other bank of memory modules. <laughs> Now step one guys of my slightly lazy man's guide to uh, upgrading your water cooling is going to be to remove everything that you can. Now if you planned your water cooling loop carefully, in this case we did, you can see we've got two tubes that come out of the bottom and everything else, if we disconnected it all, can just be removed as one big mass of water cooled stuff. So we're going to pull this radiator out. I've already disconnected the CPU block. We're going to take off this RAM block and pull these video cards out and lay them all out here while we replace the motherboard. For the next step, guys, now we need to disconnect the motherboard from all the power and data cables that it's connected to and pull our original motherboard, the G1 Assassin, out of the case so that we can replace it with the X79 UD7. Now we've extracted the motherboard, so we are ready to put our new board in, but first what we're going to do is we are going to drain the liquid cooling loop. Now, if we were putting in the same CPU block and if we were not changing the configuration in any way other than the motherboard, we could get away with taking this whole thing and shoving it back in there. But because we have to change some components, we're going to have to empty the liquid. So the easiest way to drain a water cooling loop is to get it separated away from the case, away from the rest of your hardware, and just take off a fitting. This is bar none, way easier than any way anyone else is going to tell you how to drain a water cooling loop. It's very, very simple. Anyone can do it. So we're just going to go ahead and take off this fitting until water starts to come out. Here we go. Compression fitting, undoing, and ready, and here we go. So you can see not a whole lot of water comes out. So what we're going to have to do in order to make sure that all of the components that we're changing are empty is we're going to take one end of that tubing and just blow on it a little bit. So 
It's a horrible noise. <laughs> and you could argue that I'm putting some contaminants in the loop. You know what, I probably am, but I'm using, I'm using a fluid that has a biocide in it, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Also, I probably shouldn't have to say this, <laughs> but please don't drink water cooling fluid. It's bad for you. <laughs> okay, so now we can do a quick sort of sanity check here. And uh, yeah, sanity, you won't find much of that on this show. There we go. I think we're pretty much empty. And we're gonna look in some of the tubes and make sure that it's, that it's pretty much empty. A little bit of fluid left over is still fine. But uh, there you go. Once we've emptied the components, now we can start to work on the loop that is taking it apart so that we can install the blocks again on the motherboard once we install it and reconnect all the tubing. Now guys, I'm not gonna be covering installing a CPU block or installing the RAM blocks because that was done in the water cooling guide part two. So what I'm only gonna be showing is the general steps involved. So now that we have installed our copperhead water blocks on either side of our gold-plated CPU water block, which by the way, looks totally badass. Here, I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at that. Yeah, that's ballin'. Um, I'm going to reinstall this whole thing back into the motherboard and it weighs a, must weigh a metric ton. So here we go. We've got the motherboard back in now, all plugged back in, including all the fan headers and front panel headers and SATA cables and all that good stuff. So now what we're ready to do is take the video cards, reinstall those, and then re all the tubing in here so that both of these water blocks, these memory blocks, as well as the CPU water block are going to be getting water flow.
right, so we got all the tubing installed. You can actually see on the TV behind us, we had to look up which one was the inlet on the Apple GHD. It's very important to use the correct inlet, although it does have three outlets that you can actually use, although we're just doing a serial loop, so we didn't have to worry about that. You can see we did have a couple spills, but we didn't spill on any critical components. We got a little bit of water on a fan, uh, not a big deal. And uh, if we had drained our loop more thoroughly, we could have avoided that for sure. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna refill the system before we do a couple glamour shots for you guys. If you need to know how to refill a loop, you should probably refer back to part three of the water cooling guide for specific instructions. And here it is, the system is booted up. So I have shown you through the magic of time lapse how to do a motherboard swap or a CPU upgrade or pretty much any kind of uh, basic upgrade on a water-cooled system. So you drain the system partially as much as you have to. You take apart whatever you need to. You reinstall all the blocks. Then you reconnect the tubing and actually uh, filling and bleeding the system took almost no time at all because remember there's still components in the system such as the radiator and the reservoir that are completely full of water. So we're doing a lot less filling than we had to do. In fact, I only had to put in this much to refill it Whereas when we filled the original loop, we used this much of a bottle. So, so there. All right. I'm actually going to put this down. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to turn off some of the lights in here so you guys can check out or actually maybe do a couple lights on shots. You know, kind of Slick's going to use his camera artistry to uh, show our upgraded TJ11. So this is now a computer that I'd feel a lot better calling an ultimate water-cooled machine because we're using socket LGA 2011 with the new Intel Extreme Edition. We've got dual banks of quad channel water-cooled memory going on in here with our GTX 590s, our Gigabyte X X79 UD7. We've still got that HCP 1200 uh, Antec 80 plus gold power supply down there, which is one of the finest power supplies out there. It's only rated for 1200 watts, but it's been seen uh, doing significantly more than that. So I'm going to grab the lights now and give you guys a bit of a, a lights off look at it. And yes, it is actually my job to build systems like this and then show them off. There we go. How's that looking? Ah, the TV. The TV's got to go. Got to go, Mr. TV. Maybe not available. There we go. Now how we looking? There we go. Pretty sweet, hey guys? So there's our memory block. There's our CPU block. Other more different memory block. Got our dual GTX 590 classified EVGA video cards, and I think we're pretty much done here. So thank you for checking out this extreme edition of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos from your favorite e-tailer, NCIX.com. Spooky vision.